I call it the one tricks. You know the real reason why I gotta call it one tricks? The real reason why is because I've called out Intra's one trick way too many times. And I feel pretty bad about them. And so I gotta call out a couple more people's one tricks to kinda even it out, you know? Make sure that everyone gets their one tricks banned away from them. Make it fair. I did not say Ice is one trick. Everyone knows it though, it's Zoe. <clears throat> <laughs> When you can't join Discord because it's taking a minute to authenticate? No! Commander C, you got this. You got this. All right. Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Discrod. Uh... Um, there we go. Uh, I can. I swear that I can type sometimes. Um, <laughs> welcome to game number two of Excellency <laughs> Shoutcasting. We've got Salek with us. It's been forever, but he is joining us once again as the analyst for game number two. We've got Team Chug Hug versus Team Go Go Go! And it's gonna be a pretty awesome time. Don't forget, all these games go on to YouTube. Also, if you get into a game tonight, I will send you a mystery skin. Everyone who plays tonight gets a mystery skin, except Salek. Um, Hey, Puddles XD, thank you for joining the pool as well. Um, what is your uh, in-game name, Puddles? I need I need your guys' in-game name. The best way to do it is to do the exclamation point join, and then afterwards you put your, your in-game name, and that makes it a lot easier to see what you those need not are. Follow, um, but you must witness. Hey, Puddles XD also sent the follow. There we go. Oh, Puddles C? See, he's got the fancy, the fancy symbol too. What is with this? Everyone's using the fancy symbol. It's gonna give me an aneurysm. Cause I can't just type that in. I can't just type in. Puddles, I got you. I copy pasted it off of Twitch. We're fine. We're good. All right, to the bands. We got- Nailed it. <laughs> hey, Nailed it. So Jace's might be able to pick up his champion. I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say what it is, but Zoe, well, well, Zyra, not banned so far. and Lissandra banned away. Yeah, For some Lissandra. reason, I kept getting Z on my tongue because the Zoe Zyra, I wanted to say Zandra, and I'm like, well, this isn't the name of this champion. Her, her thumbnail also kind of looks, I can give you, I can give you like Zerath. Yeah, it might, no, might have been where your just, brain just, was going. I blue, you yeah, trying Zerath to cover for me, but just stop. It's okay. Just throw me under the bus. <laughs> I'm already squished. I'm 200 yards behind us. Rengar, Tom Pinch, Darius Bandaway. No surprise, the Darius Bandaway against Seal. If you know these guys' champions, you'll know what they pick. Rengar, also one of Seal's favorite champions. I'm surprised there isn't a certain ban against Commander C. He has played this particular champion that I shall not name. The past, like, eight times he's ever played on the stream. It is obviously well, his stream one trick. So we're They do have a second ban phase that they're going for after having locked in the Irelia, Talia, and Riven. Uh, over for the uh, for blue side here, so this is going to be uh, very interesting to see what they aim for here if they do go after commander's one trick. Jokes on you! This season, all five bands at once. Oh, that would be pretty slick. Um, I highly doubt they're going to do that. Have I seen any cool Oriana ults recently? Last uh, stream, I think it was last Thursday. Didn't you? Didn't you pull one that basically won the game for on the top side at like the 18 minute mark? I'm pretty sure it was you that did a, a Orianna ultimate shockwave that basically decimated the entire enemy team and won the game single-handedly. But Yorick banned away by the side of Chug Hug. I'm not sure who that's against particularly, or if it's just one of those stronger champions want to get it out. It's a strong top lane, and Seal is a top laner, so take it away. Especially strong, heavy push top laner too. Once he gets his mist walkers out, it makes it really easy to push, so he can knock down those armor platings very quickly. Uh, I think it's the theory behind that. Okay, well, uh, I know who Commander C is going to play. Um, doesn't matter what lane it is, I know exactly who he's going to play because they banned away Intra's main, even though Intra isn't even in the game. Um, interesting choices there, as Seal going to be grabbing Zed most likely for the mid lane. The question is, at this point, is that a jungle fiddlesticks? No, it's a jungle master Yi and a support fiddlesticks with the Kai'Sa. And usually you see Fiddle paired with the Heimerdinger, but support fiddle with Kaisa. That is going to be interesting development in the bottom lane. Uh, unless that Kaisa ends up going mid, but I doubt it. Right now, anyways. It's tough to say once we get that last pick from Commander, because that'll that'll put everything into place. Because Seal will sometimes take that Zed into the top lane. I've seen him do that a couple of times, so that definitely is still on, on the table as an option. Uh, if Commander's going to be taking over the mid lane here. Ooh, and we do have Orianna picked up. Dappa God, you might see some cool Orianna ultimates this game as Ice is going to be grabbing that for the mid lane for the side of Chug Hug, which is also kind of cool because they're blue side and uh, the Chug Jug from Fortnite is blue. So maybe that's their mentality, but 
Of course, somebody had to misspell, which meant that I'm going to make fun of them and say hug instead as Commander C doesn't pick up the champion that he's one trick for forever and picks up Velkaz instead? Well, slap yep. me silly, and I guess that I'm a bad caster because my predictions have been all off tonight as we got 40 seconds before we see it's the final locks in. It's the first day of preseason. Everybody's predictions about everything are going to be off right now, Jake. Don't well, blame yourself. I'll, I'll pat myself on the back for getting something right next week. Um, yeah, it's that, that <laughs> future thinking. You set your eyes on what the goal is, and then you just go for that goal because you'll probably miss the ones right in front of you. <clears throat> anyway. I always try to give you a good show in game three. Dapper God, I appreciate that. I'm sure that it's going to be a good one. Last game was pretty good. And it, those changes with the landing phase definitely seem to uh, draw out the landing seal? phase. Oh, I got actually like two seconds before I do this. Seal? Wait. Is okay, seal? so that didn't get traded. Seal is playing Zed Jungle. Nope, there it goes. There goes this. There goes the summoner swap. So Swipper is going to be E Jungle. Have you not heard that Zed. before on stream that it does that? I'm just what? Letting, I would just let you get tricked. Um, the spectator mode has a, a small visual issue in that sometimes the spells won't switch until the three minutes start. And so... Is that a bug or is that intentional? Because that seems like it would be intentional. It could be so either it's... one. I really don't know which one it is, but it, it could really be either one. Um, it might be in intentional. Hey, Dr. V, Mr. Dr. V himself. Guys, if you like streamers, I'm just gonna keep shouting him out every time he comes in. He streams some amazing stuff right now. He's working through the entire Halo series. Um, I mostly spent today actually watching a different streamer um, that I support as well, but Doctor is one of my favorite people to watch in the mornings um, because he just makes it entertaining. I go to work, I turn on Dr. and I just enjoy his stream. But we gotta talk about this game. Because Team Jughug has Catinator in the mid lane as Talia. Uh, no, hold on, hold up. Thinking, 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 and done. All right, it is Catinator as Talia 80 carry bottom lane, Jammy Jar with the Irelia bottom lane supportive role, Sejace is on the Riven in the top lane, Ice with the Oriana in the mid lane, and 945 with the Jax in the jungle. Boom! Don't even at me. Give it away, Sailor, for Team Go Go Go. <laughs> All right, on the side of Team Go Go Go, we have Swipper taking Master Yi into the jungle. Fiddlesticks piloted by Haunch Crow going down into the supportive role in the bot lane. Kaisa played by Dive going into the ADC role, sitting on barrier. So that kind of confused me for a second. Uh, Deceased Seal, known as a top laner, taking the Zed into the top lane, and then Velkaz mid lane for Commander C twenty one twenty one. All right, looking at these team compositions, I'm really liking the side of Team Go Go Go, and that's because they actually have an AD carry. We saw the problem last game when you don't have an AD carry when it comes to the now super tank minions that deal a lot more damage after those turret shields drop. They can push the lanes a lot harder, and if you take out an inhibitor, and you are able to shove one of those super minion waves into the enemy base, it becomes nearly impossible to wave clear without a consistent source of damage that an AD carry is going to provide. Also on top of that, something you got to keep in mind uh, for both teams in this game is that nobody has a true dedicated tank. Um, so we're going to see characters dropping left and right, especially with uh, bursty champions like the Irelia, like the Riven. Um, thinking of the, of course, the Zed pops into mind as one of those bursty champions that's going to be destroying somebody as soon as the fight starts off. These assassins really have to pick their targets carefully, make sure that they pick off the right target so that uh, their team can succeed through the rest of the fight with or without that assassin, depending on what ends up happening after they get that immediate kill. So you know what makes me really happy about this game in particular with no tanks? That there's going to be a lot of blood. That last game, Jax responded with tank meta, and now we have a game with no tanks. <laughs> so it's kind of that we're going to have lots of blood, and we also have a not tank uh, tank meta, apparently. Um, I don't even know if it's going to be a tank meta. Honestly, I think we need at least a month for things to kind of start to settle and work themselves out before we get to calling whatever meta the heck it's going to be. Plus, apparently... In 8.24, there's going to be some major changes that come in as well. So just hold on to your horses, guys. The, the chaos is not over yet. 
Um, so Fancy Skins, yeah. Championship Riven, Dark Star Oriana, Championship Zed. So it's actually Championship versus Championship this game. That's pretty yeah. cool. I am noticing we have uh, so three Dark Harvests sitting out there between the Talia, uh, Kaisa, and Zed all on Dark Harvest. Meanwhile, Irelia and Riven sticking with the Conqueror, uh, as well as Master Yi sitting on Conqueror this game. Very curious to see what uh, what boosts they took going forward since they can go ahead as you all know uh with the new with the new patch they're able to choose their bonuses a little bit more freely i almost had a little, an anxiety a panic slow today, attack Jake. because uh oriana was sitting at that uh, i think 90 or 80 percent and that was where things would break when the stream spectator mode was having issues and would break when, when we were having those major issues and the whole stream would crash so i had a, a moment of anxiety and i was like no 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 calm down it's okay it's okay we're gonna get into the game i gotta throw out a compliment to the fiddlesticks as well i have yet to see that skin in game so really excited um raktorian i think is how it said fiddlesticks Praetorian? well no the p is silent isn't it all, all nope. the dinosaur stuff has the piece being silent. That's that's not a dinosaur. That's not a dinosaur. Well, but he's kind of like a robotic dinosaur, isn't he? No, he's he's a robot, yeah, but not not dinosaur. Look at that scariness. What's with those teeth? Oh God. Okay, you know what? Uh, I take gotta... it back. Uh, at whatever I've said about the scariest skin in game, this actually might be my new terror. I don't want him showing up in my dreams. At no, I mean, I'm being serious. We're probably going to get a pause here in a second. I just want to focus on this t uh, fiddlesticks because... No, get out of the brush. I can't see your full terror. He's got these rows of teeth in the center of his face. It's just terrifying. <laughs> like, put this monster in any game and, and <laughs> you're gonna immediately have nightmares it's it's that simple guys that fiddle skin is legit ear rape every time really oh that is that is that you know what no i'll, I'll is give it you that ults? again i've never seen this skin in game he's just so <laughs> he's like the worst mix of a xenomorph and and transformers you know who he reminds me of with the with that row of teeth you're talking about yeah and I know you don't play. Uh, I know you don't play. Well, I don't know if you don't play Smite, but uh, in Smite, uh, Bakasura is just absolutely terrifying. And he has like that. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll send you a splash art. It's it's terrifying. For six months, Zeno, the champion, the god, the master of them all. I don't know. Is a mod higher than a VIP? Because I got to figure out which one's higher and give it to you. Because you are just a champion of champions. But we are in a game, ladies and gentlemen. I haven't even moved everybody around because this fiddlesticks is just terrorizing me. I, I don't even know how to talk about him. Um, moving everyone to the correct positions. Velkaz has respawned in the mid lane. And That's a Dive lot of damage on a dive. Immediately flashing away. The exhaust Flash for Jar. That's for whoa. Ready as the fiddlesticks is now trying to escape and get out. Flashes underneath the turret. Sliver of health ignites. Jammy Jar. I don't think it's going to be enough. Ooh, the the crow was bouncing back and forth. Got him extremely low. Wasn't enough, but that's two kills already for Chug Hug in the bottom lane. And I don't think they were expecting him to just jump on their face like that. Complete decimation there in the bot lane right off the bat. Uh, put a quick end to any type of advantage they might have been able to eke out by virtue of being uh, by virtue of being a ranged bot lane. And 945 gonna find the Yi. He does have the advantage with that red buff, so he's gonna have to slow in a little bit of burn, but Yi's got the alpha strike. It says still trade one for one as Irelia Jammy Jar picks up yet another kill. Keep in mind, this is the support Irelia. It is currently 2-0 and 1 and now has a bounty on her head already. That's pretty fascinating. Also, I forgot because I read it terribly that it is a legit ear wrap every time the fiddlesticks goes to drain someone in that bottom lane so expect to hear some legit lit flame bars coming out from this fiddlesticks every time he uh goes to use one of those heals it's probably going to be a new record that he's dropping trying to slip his um tape mix into your happy meal <laughs> slip his tape mix into your happy meal yeah, have you never heard that when you're Jake. trying to get your, your lit uh, mixtape, you slip it into the Happy Meal in the McDonald's drive-thru. 
Uh, Seal's gonna be fighting some Jace's the top side, gets the proc off with that Dark Seal, a little bit of extra burst damage onto Sejace, forcing that ribbon back underneath the turret as the bottom layer to the side of Chug Hug have joined together Seal? down there. Do what he can. Sejace is still playing with fire on that top side. He's, he's now been ignited by Seal with the sliver of health. Gonna have to walk away. Nope, he's gonna stick around and continue to just uh, play chicken with the ribbon. He's got the shield, but the nice flash from Seal keeps him alive. Sejace has already used shield of as the flash as well. Zen. Minion damage OP. We're only level three here. <laughs> this is awesome. Ooh, gets the shuriken with the dash. Keeps Riven alive the with the shield. The shield. The shield barely kept her up there. All right, we finally see level three on these bottom lanes to the side of Team Go, Go, Go. They were able to get a little bit of farm. It's 18 farm on the Irelia, and maybe it is a Yeah, Excuse me, I said that wrong. Fiddlesticks picked up very quickly, as it is Irelia who's been getting the farm down there, sitting at 25 right now. And Ooh. nice move by Seal. Dashes away with that Shadow Clone, and it comes right back in. Is 945 going to be caught out by Swiffer on the Yi? Jax just uses that ward hop to hop over the wall, but it's non-stop fighting in the bottom lane because Kais is gone once again. Jammy Jar picking up his third kill of the game. And good God, Chug Hug, uh, you don't Six. even take a break in this bottom lane. Jammy Jar, five, less than five minutes into the game, already has a 600 gold bounty on her head. Three, zero, and two with 33 farms sitting on this Irelia. Remember that uh, bounties now stack all in addition to kills, also stack with your uh with your farm nice job right. by honch crow getting up here and just getting a crow into the middle of them making sure that he can uh at least silence them down a little bit that's gonna be a stun that's oh, a knockback that pairing is honch just Crow's so gonna beautiful does oh. manage to get the drain on jammy jar falls to catenator here dive does manage to get the kill that's gonna be a shutdown for the 450 gold Ooh. Dive still going in towards Jamie Jaw. That's going to be the stun, though, and that should be enough to disengage here. Oh, Supercharger pulls him forward just and a little bit. he's got the barrier as well, so he can go underneath the turret. Doesn't he get the wall, and but he gets is it with not the barrier. afraid of it at trade. all. Oh, the minions are going to be enough, and Jamie Jar still picks up Dive on the backside. But it was a Worth. double shutdown gold for the Kaisa. Massive 1, influx in gold. 1,050. 1,050 gold off the shutdowns alone there over to the Kai'Sa. That single-handedly might have put Dive back in this game to where he can actually make an effect. It's not going to be as much compared to what Jamie Jar and Catenator already have sitting on him. As Jace's goes in here onto Delicious Seal. Delicious Seal manages to ult pack, pop back a little bit. Beautiful play by him to make sure that he stays alive there. Sorry, I'm kind of taking over your role here. No, that's totally cool. That's the best part about casting, especially at pro levels when you listen to them, is they kind of bounce the ball back and forth and uh, it's good to be good at both sides. There is about a two and a half thousand gold lead for Chug Hug so far, but most of that is found in that bottom lane. Four one the Irelia. Even with those shutdowns, Kais is still down another one point five thousand gold. You can see sitting on that thrift store of items. Gonna be a little bit yet to get truly back in the game. Also down that twenty minions as Catenator trying to steal away some of the jungle from the Yi, but dive and. Uh, Honch Crow are following up behind. The Yi oh, uses the Blast Cone to jump right in. Alpha Strikes onto Catenator. He's been ignited, so he's going to turn around and heal. The Drain going to drop to Leo low. Not quite finish him enough. Velka is taken out There's into that night. river as he was cat. grouped together by three members. Catenator with the Rock Throw tossed back. We'll push Ice does have Shockwave here. But not going to be quite enough just yet. We'll see if Ice wants to try to Shockwave them underneath the turret. They're going to find the stone onto Dive. Kaisa Ball is on Jammy Jar. There it is, the shock wave onto two members are gonna immediately walk back underneath the turret. They're trying to stay safe for now. And it looks like they will force Chug Hug to back away, but they've won this side of the map. I don't think they're gonna go for the Mountain Drake though. No, nah, with 945 as low as he is, it's gonna be a little bit too risky. So they're gonna back off, back to the lanes, clear it up, push it in. And uh, honestly, I mean, you're sitting on a decent chunk of gold as uh, Honch Crow gets caught out yet again. It is going to be dropped here. Dive also going to be dropped. However, does pick up the counter kill. 945, it actually manages to stay alive. Well played by Dive there. Yeah, getting that little bit of movement speed is so nice against that stun from Irela. You can really just sidestep it over and over. As it still stands, though, you can't 1v2. And Jammy Jar says, you think that you're safe between turrets. I will follow you wherever you go. Forces the flash out. Ice trying to escape from the Yi and the Velkaz. And we'll be able to get the trade. These turrets have been changed. They do a lot more damage than you expect. It's going to be a lot harder for this Yi to dive. The uh, Fiddlestick. 
Phoenix will probably be going down the top side. Gets the fear onto the Irelia, so it's Catnir that's taking all the damage, channeling back and forth, healing off of the minions. He's still going to be going down the turret, shooting Jammy Jar, but I think that second shot will take the Irelia out and Fiddlesticks gets the shutdown shutdown gold. Catenator is still underneath the turret, but with a handful of minions, I don't think the turret's going to take Catenator out, and so the Talia should be able to walk away safely. Blessing and a curse at the same time there. A little bit of extra gold onto the fiddlesticks. He did manage to pick that up, so that is going to push his build up a little bit, little ways. However, that does give Irelia a chance to spend the gold. She's now sitting on 5,000 gold total. Uh, manages to spend about 1,300 of it there when on that on that death. So, uh, so I want to take just a pause here for a moment, right? We've got 3,000 gold lead for Chug Hug. They're doing really well. And I want to take a quick zoom in on ice and just say, so do you think these teams are balanced, ice? Do you think these teams are balanced? Look me in the eye and tell me that these teams are balanced. Okay, uh, back to the game. <clears throat> uh, as uh, ice is trying to find an engagement onto Swipper, knocks the Yi down to about half, of course, underneath the turret. The, uh, Oriana hasn't gotten that much damage onto the mid lane turret, just a little bit of initial poke. So Jace is returning to the top side. Yeah, a lot of bonus gold has fallen into the hands of Jamie Jar and Catnator. They've put put down four of the five turret platings here. Yeah, that bottom lane turret really Jeez. suffering. Chug Hug's bottom lane just loving to shove that in as their top lane is going to be trying to get a gank from 945. But again, that fancy movement by the Zed going to get him out alive. Nice, With that Duke. move with the Shadow Clone in the bottom side. Haunch Crow waits out the wall, gets over it for now. The Rock Ooh. Throw Toss Back will take him out, though. I don't remember the name of that skill, even though I've tried to memorize it a thousand times. Dive moving forward aggressively into two members. Rethinks that, starts to step backwards, but he's been exhausted, stunned, and Jammy Jar with a Trinity Force at 10 minutes into the game bursts down that Kaisa and picks up a seventh kill of the game. Yeah, that puts uh, Irelia back in the situation with a 450 gold bounty. But more than that, that's going to be first turret going over to the side of a uh, blue team. I forget what's... Oh yeah, Chug Hug, that's right. Yep. Going over <laughs> to Chug Hug. And uh, yeah, this is getting this is going from bad to worse very quickly. I felt like he had to make a play there in the bot lane, it looked like. And when that started to go poorly, it just kept going down. And Haunch Crow just gets deleted on the bot side. Swipper's here to try and make an effect here. Pops the Highlander. Steps in on Catnator, does manage to get the kill here. Jammy Jar, he got the Alpha Strike on a Jammy Jar. Stun lands, that's going to be jumping on a dive. The shield from dive, nice barrier out of dive to stay alive there. And that's going to collect the uh, bounty gold. So that's going to be a little bit of extra gold in the pockets of Go, Go, Go here. As delicious, uh, the Sea Seal moving away. Wait, Dark what? Night down. Yes. He popped back to his ult clone. That was it looks so like nice. Not only did he, he ulted and then flashed away, getting a huge amount of separation, but then went back in because he had a night ignite available, trying to finish off Sejaces. You can see from the side here, a sliver of health on this ribbon. Jax also barely able to make it out alive. And that's sealed. You cannot predict where this guy is going as Haunch Crow ganks into that mid lane, throwing out the ultimate. That's a whole lot of burn damage onto Orianna. Ice drops down because Fiddlesticks finally is able to help find a kill towards that mid lane. And this is where when you take an immobile champion like a Fiddlesticks into a champion like Talia, it's going to be a rough time. And this is also something that I wanted to comment quickly on. Because we're in the preseason, there's a lot of opportunity for people to try to take these weird picks in weird places. This is a Talia support. Keep that in mind. Making use of, I'm actually going to get the name of it now, the seismic shove to throw enemies, especially immobile enemies like that Fiddlesticks, into the awaiting arms of the Irelia. And this power combo is looking really good for the side of Chug Hug. Well, it's not just that. It's that the Irelia is able to set up the seismic shove very nicely, as we see an engagement from Sejaces onto Haunch Crow and Dive. 945 here on the side coming in, landing quite a few auto attacks. Dive manages to get out just as 945 turns around. Haunch Crow lands the fear there. That's going to be a full disengage uh, from the side of Go, Go, Go. Yeah, really nicely moved by Dive, using that Killer Instinct to reposition the other side. Flash but the Hunch fear Crow. comes through. That might be Sejaces going down, finds the sun onto Dive, but the Kaisa damage is going to be too much. They're going to take out the Rivet. However, Dive recognizes that his life's already over, picks up a few more minions before being finished off by the Jax, who came for a return gank in that bottom side. 
Yeah, really smooth job by Jax, just looping back around there. Took advantage of the fact that he had the control ward sitting in Tribrush. Like I was saying before that engage happens, we, I'm hoping we'll see it here again in a second, is that uh, we talk about the seismic shove throwing enemies into the waiting arms of Irelia, but Irelia is able to set up that seismic shove so beautifully when she drops those daggers and manages to get the stun down. Uh, that stun is so long, it sets up the full seismic shove and the full combo for Talia, so she can really contribute a lot of damage to that and allow Jamie Jar on this Irelia to just finish it up there. With the see seal extremely low, we don't see the dive just yet because it's a shockwave in the mid lane, straight into the stun from Jax. Beautiful play, will take out the Vel cause as Zed recalling in that top side, waiting for Yi to go in. Fiddlesticks is here as well. Swipper gonna slip, lip, almost goes down. I really get the disarm. Oh, the nice job, but seal. seal did not recall. He was actually hiding off to the side, sticks around, gets a little bit of poke damage to the Catenator as well. Honchkrow staying underneath the turret, kind of trying to bait the Talia in. Has Dive gonna find ice in the mid lane? Throws out the Void Seekers. Won't be able to find ice though, so the Oriana is still sitting at a pretty decent amount of health. Dive doesn't want this fight, I don't think. Oh, maybe he does. Uh, oh uh, no! Yeah. Ice with a crazy good outplay between the command attack as well as the shield. Didn't even need to burn barrier. 200 IQ had it down already. Ice, um, totally, totally fair, totally balanced team composition. <clears throat> well, and it and it boils down there to dives going into one v one a champion that is even in gold with him, but two levels above him. And that's the big thing here is that ice is two levels. That's so much gold worth of just innate stats from those levels just sitting there. All right, we have passed the 14 minute mark. So with the towers don't have those shields anymore. Nice fear from Onchkrow immediately shoves the Jaces away. So that ult is burned on the Riven and will time out eventually. She does have teleport, so she could try to get back to that top lane if she wanted to join the rest of her team who's continuing to shove that one down. They pick up their second turret as well, continuing to extend their gold lead to a little bit less than 6,000 gold at this point. No Drakes picked up yet. Mountain Drake still on the table. It's kind of scary if you're Commander C2121 right now, because you are the only outer turret standing, and that turret no longer has any defensive stats because the armor plating has fallen off. Velkaz looks like he's wanting to join the rest of his team up here for a gang. There's the Fiddlesticks ultimate going in, gets the fear onto the Talia, and so the Talia will be dropped down. Jamie Jar flashing, trying to get to safety for the moment. There is a Blast Cone available that they could try to use to chase down the Irelia. My camera's all over the place because I'm bad at controlling it. This is the production from the NALCS you expect. 945 off to the side, decides not to engage on the three members, instead waiting for the shove by Go Go Go, who want to push down the mid lane. Dive getting a couple of auto attacks down. Jax decides now's the time to go in. Finds the sun onto the Kaisa. The knockup though. Slow side for five down. The rockets from the Kaisa gonna be enough to take him out. And they get one trade. Beautiful punishment by Go Go Go. And Ice wasn't even really in position there. Too far back to really make an effect with the command protect there. Couldn't get the shockwave off because he couldn't get the command protect down. As we see to see Seal here engaging on some Jaces. All the shurikens get dodged there. Yeah, nice movement by Sejaces. Oh, the flash. flash! And finds the stun onto Seal. Needs another auto attack and takes him out. The Rift Herald spawned into the mid lane. But this is by Swipper on the Yi. He's ignited. This healing might keep him alive for long enough, but no, Catenator able to take him out. The uh, Rift Herald got one charge down onto that mid lane turret, dropping it to about half. Catenator going aggressively onto Commander C, drops him down to about a third health. And Jammy Jar finds the stun onto the Fiddlesticks. This constant poke from Chug Hug. You can see every time you think that it's safe to stick a step forward, something's coming flying at your face. Yeah, and really there's not too much they can do there. I mean, thankful that Swipper took the uh, Catenator and gets dropped by Honchkrow there. Nice, nice little bit Wait, of work with the Wait, they've got Jammy Jar underneath the turret as well. This is going to be two kills going to the side of Go, Go, Go because the over-aggression from Chug Hug and Honchkrow's Crow bouncing between the minions cleared the wave and three members were cut off from underneath the turret. Now Honch Crow jumps into the mid lane with the ultimate. Oriana dropping as well. And Go 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 is coming back into this game one kill at a time. Yeah, and uh, who? Wait a minute. Hold on a minute. Who's got... So Jace is trying to ent into the mid lane underneath three people. Honchkrow going to take a touch of damage from the turret. The last shot not going to be enough to take him down, and they're going to get their first turret of the game. Go, go, go. Now sitting at 3,000 gold behind Chug Hug. Not that far. 
Okay, hold on a minute. What? Hold on. And Commander, they pick up the mountain, you? Drake. 945, re engaging on to dive. He's getting, oh, the barrier keeps the Kaisa alive. She's got the train. No, Julia is able to shut her down. But Velkaz with a beautiful play, not only with the knock up, but the burst damage as well. Now Swipper engaging on to Catinator, slicing and dicing, and the rock throw is not going to be enough. Deceased Seal on the bottom side picks up a second turret as well. And that goalie, there was a three, now sitting at two. Go, 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 continues to just go, go, go to get themselves back into the game. And they're slowly but surely clawing themselves back into a position where they can take this game. It's actually really surprising seeing them come back like this. But now that they're starting to hit some of those key item breakpoints, Kaisa sitting on her Storm Razor, as well as uh, building up towards the... Uh... Oh, that's a key buy for Kaisa right there. Switched, went with Ninja Tabi instead of going for Berserker Greaves. Ninja Tabi reducing the damage out of the Irelia, the Jax, and the Riven. All keeping her alive for just a little bit longer. Uh, Yi going for the Ginsu's rush with that slight change they made to Ginsu's rage blade this uh, this patch. Oh, you can oh see how gosh, fast those a... minions get cleared by Haunch Crow. He can just walk into lane through one crow and clear the entire wave. Um, Catinator off to the side, maybe being kind oh of. Oh my Ooh. gosh, where did Dive go? Where did the fiddlesticks go? Cat and they're going full burst 965 on this Talia. Keep in mind, support Talia just wipes two members off of the map. Now wants that mid lane turret. It's just a couple of hits from falling down, and that should be more gold back to Chug Hug. In the meantime, Jammy Jar wanting to engage on Commander C. He uses the barrier, will keep himself alive. He's Catnir trying to chase it in. In the meantime, Jason is going underneath the turret, sealed to the backside, uses the ultimate onto ice. Slippers should be able to pop him, strike. take him down, hops back to his shadow clone, survives for now until Jax hops in the counter strike for the stun. Swipper with the last cleanup crew finishes off those two members as well as in the meantime. Leah gets taken That's out an the ace. from the Velkaz and go 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 picks up an ace beautiful timing by Swipper to come in the fight perfect and now they're ahead in kills and only 2,000 gold behind oh, Wait, three yay. members might be able to get Baron that's that's exactly what I was thinking because two of those members are heavy auto attack champions that are able to put out a lot of consistent damage here especially with Dive being able to proc the Plasma here every couple seconds. And yeah, they're not going to be able to respond to this. That's going to be Baron going over to Go, Go, Go here and give them an opportunity to really push this advantage here that they've managed to squeak out for themselves. Even in gold, the game is currently sitting on a knife's edge. This is what we talked about at the beginning of the game with no tanks in this game. It really comes down to who plays their champions better. And that initial three-man dive underneath that mid lane turret when the minion wave was gone caught chug hug out they lost two members and gave them over to critical members of dive and commander c on the enemy lineup and you gotta give credit to haunch crow at the end of the game it looked like this guy was just going to be another minion this fiddlesticks feeding i think four or five deaths over to the enemy team doing nothing in lane as soon as he had level six Ganks mid multiple times, ganks top multiple times, and now has become a incredibly impactful member of this team as here he is trying to ult once again, shoving Jammy Jar out of the river, giving themselves the scuttle crab. <laughs> I didn't notice that uh, Praetorian Fiddle, oh my. Yep, the well, deletion there, and they're going to keep going forward here. Yep, They've got a lot of dashes. Like always Kaisa. Move in. Ooh, that's the disarm from Irelia trying to get under three members. Dive's still been able to pick up the jacks in the meantime, though. It's going to be a double kill as the Riven is picked up by Zed as well. Everyone, or at least three members, sitting on blinking health bars, but it's almost a complete ace because Catinator is the only one left alive trying to recall, but Honch Crow is going to find him. The Talia wanting to try to finish off Fiddlesticks. He sides oh. up. Oh! <laughs> Sniped by Dive, beautiful. Oh, was that Dive? Played. That was Dive on the Kaisa. Oh, I thought that was, I thought that was Commander's, uh, Commander's. No, okay. that was the Void Seeker from Dive over the wall, okay. finds the Talia, picks up a delayed ace. Oriana has respawned in time to try to defend this mid lane turret, but there are three members here and they still all have the Baron member, or four members, sorry, with Baron buff. They're gonna wait for the cannon minion to show up. They decide to back away as all the members of Chug Hug are now gonna start to respawn with full health. Play it safe and just head back to the base. And now sitting on a 2.7k gold advantage here. Four turrets down to three. Now that, uh, excuse me, now that Seal managed to get that bottom in inner turret. And this is going to be an interesting little bit of a... 
interesting way to close the game here. How do these teams move forward now that uh now that we're seeing a lot of the squishiness coming through and really starting to show uh, with how quickly Catnator and uh, Ice get popped out of the fights here. Well, the scary thing for Chug Hug is the later this game goes, the more that Kais is just oh, going to wipe people Haunch off the map. As Catnator are going to be picked up by almost all of just Haunch Crow's ultimate, burning the Talia down. They want the Ocean Drake. Swipper's already on it, taking it down. Yee's cleared the Ocean Drake before Chug Hug can even respond. Swipper goes oh, over wow. the wall. That the Alpha Strike, though, may be his death. He's stunned up. He goes down. That's what happens when your team's ahead. You got to have at least one enter as the killer instant from Kaisa gonna reposition herself to avoid more than just one single disarm so Jace is gonna be taken out as well beautiful movements by this Kaisa to engage and disengage when necessary nine for five popping the ultimate to try to escape from seal on this Zed who's just gonna chase him in he's gonna be hit by the son of the counter strike use the ultimate it's the 1v1 you've always wanted to see and by that I mean it's seal just wiping another member off the map as Catinator comes to try to defend the mid lane dive stepping forward to avoid the seismic shove from Catinator who's still around the side wanting to throw one more rock to take out the Kaisa can't quite find the range yet as the mid lane turret will drop inhibitor next on the target that oh his goodness is just so much oh. damage from dive you need to be careful not to super speed over those rocks or will get bursted and a fall oriana coming out from the base but dive will help finish it off with one last auto attack and walk away safely nice disengage there after oh honchkrow going in here making sure he tears them apart with those razor blades flying all around his head and that's gonna be the follow-up coming through from commander Dive manages to pull in, gets the shield off of Killer Instinct as he pulls forward, and that is going to be another quick, couple of quick kills here. 945 does manage to get into onto Dive Power. The fear from Honchkrow is perfect on point and manages to disengage it, and that's going to be a lot of long death timers. Catinators in base here might be able to pull some defense. Dive, man dive goes in, does get hit. But that's uh that's an ace there. Shortest death timers, 12 seconds. They're just gonna go ahead and back out here. Commander's gonna look to uh look to clear out some of the waves a little bit here. Eight, four, and four on the Ooh. boosted ye, according to Bloodthirsty in the chat. Uh I don't quite disagree. Now, Super has been doing pretty good so far. Definitely focused on those neutral objectives, though. Not only picking up both Drakes and the Rift Herald, but also helping to take out the Baron, which was one of those major turning points for the side of Go, Go, Go. Now sitting at 6,000 gold lead. Middle inhibitor down. They are feeling pretty good. The main thing to keep an eye on is this Dive, who is not afraid of going aggressively and has continuously used this barrier when perfectly timed. Jax would have killed the Kai'Sa, but barriers the last second with a fear of the fiddlesticks means that Kai'Sa lives. Seal might be a little bit over aggressive himself, goes in, doesn't have a Shadow Clone to jump to. Oh, Dodges nice ultimate. From Irelia, and now trying to escape. He's got the oh, Shadow Clone to go I back to on the opposite back. side. That's a massive joke. Talia's still going to chase it in, but Yee's on the back on the back side here. Continues bounce back. Swimmer's in tank once again. No surprises. Seal goes in. Oh, it got out by the last the rock throw. This is what you gotta have. Throw the game. Hodgecrow now should be falling as that's magic shield. Not gonna protect him for too much longer and he will drop. No heal's gonna keep him alive. The pings from blue team onto the Baron. Just when you thought the game was over, blue team says, nah, they can hit harder than we've been inting. 29 kills, 240, and only a 4,000 gold difference. Well, that's what I was just about to say. It wasn't a, it wasn't so much a blue team. It was go, go, go. Just go, go, going multiple times. Not into a 3v5, but three separate 1v5s. They could not, uh, they, they didn't sync up when they engaged here. And it all starts with the C Seal being caught out here in the bot lane, trying to shove the wave forward. And uh, I thought he made a fantastic outplay. I really don't think Swipper needed to come in and engage there. Swipper engages, gets himself killed, and then Honchkrow comes in, gets himself killed. Uh, meanwhile, Delis Delis Seal comes back in after the uh, after Yi comes through, and it really ends very poorly. Thankfully, when they could have a uh, yeah. dive did not end because if the yeah. Kaisa had fallen, that would have been Baron absolutely in the hands of Chug Hug, and maybe the game state would have shifted, the pressure would have gone to the side of Chug Hug, and they would be the ones who are now in the strong position. But for now, go, go, go. Even with a couple of ints, still hold overall lead 3,000 gold, and mostly the pressure on the map middle inhibitor still down in their favor as they're going so to play around the Baron. 
trying to see where the members of Chug Hub are going to rotate to. But uh, when you get pinched the inside the Baron, it could be bad news, especially when you think about that ultimate from Irelia, going to be able to disarm the entire enemy team in one small area. Collecting around the blue buff side, Catmater Cat steals it, it away. Nice seismic shove. However, while that fight was going on, Honchcrow, Dive, Swipper, and Seal took the Baron. So that was a great job uh, just distracting them with a blue buff take. All right, so they get the Baron. We'll see what they can do with it now as once again they try to step forward. But it is really actually a good choice from GoGoGo Go Go not to fight in the jungle. Those pinched walls are going to give massive advantages to the shockwave of the Irelia as well as those AoE stuns between the... Um, Riven and the Jax. It's not where you want to fight. You want to fight where it's open, where your Kaisa can move around. So instead, they walk away safely to the mid lane, rotate, pick up a second Mountain Drake, and Seal once again is going to have to put on his dancing shoes to escape. Oh, the seismic shove a bit too early. He's able to get to the clone, uses the ult to avoid the shockwave, but he's still going to fall to Catinator in the end. His dancing shoes look pretty, but not quite enough to keep him alive. Well, and it was really... Honestly, it was really lucky on the part of uh, on the part of Go Go Go. There, they all four four members rotated over to the Drake, took the Mountain Drake, while all five members went after Delicious Seal. Or I'm sorry, Deceased Seal. Now, uh, there. I call him both. Most of the time, I call him Delicious Seal because I think he's eventually yeah. going to change it back, but maybe not just yet. Thirty kills, two forty, three thousand gold lead for Go Go Go. They've got four members that are all somewhat gathered around the mid lane as the middle inhibitor has respawned. Gatinator should be able to burst out Honchkrow. Ooh, but the spell shield is able to protect him. So he lives for now. Cat and they are gonna have to wait for another opportunity, but he's sitting on a ward, so Honchkrow just ults in. There's the ult, a killer instinct from Dive as well. Guarantee the kill onto the Talia ultimate oh, out from the Velkaz. Laser burns down 945, putting Swiffer him at a coming in. health. His Swiffer comes sliding through on the Yi. Needs one alpha strike to finish off oh. the Yi. Should be able to get it, but the auto attacks keep the Yi alive. This is the counter strike. Beautiful position. Commander C though has Jammy. the j perfect GM. Geometry? That's it, geometry. Yeah, geometry, to yeah. Find the slow onto Irelia, helping to make sure that Sheaf goes down. Middle inhibitor down once again, but now it is on to the Nexus turrets. They've got a Varen empowered cannon minion burning it down. So Jace is trying to step forward on this ribbon, doing what he can. Gets this stun onto the Kaisa. He's been feared, will be dropped as well. And now onto the second Nexus turret dive, just burning it down, waiting for opportunity to jump on any of the members trying nice to step out of the base. Nice shockwave from Ice. Will be finished off with Ice. Grabbing a beautiful ultimate on the Oriana. The flash war from Cat and Nader not going to be able to pick up either member of the enemy team. A little bit, a couple extra auto attacks. There's the ult from Talia. She decides not to carry it though. And oh, really she didn't stay. decide that. Got hit by the void, uh, by the void rift there from oh. Commander C. Just the tail end of it nicked her and prevented her from mounts from getting on the. Uh, or probably got knocked off is really what we've heard yeah. as this Catinator is going to be burned for a moment. Popped by the ultimate from the Zed. Gets the Jax as well. And he's going to walk away. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Can this Seal. man be stopped? Well, he you can. are disgusting. I mean, he's been stopped four times. He, yeah, but... you, can, you, can stop, you can stop Seal, but you have to camp him. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's Hard. He, one of the only With games an Amumu. he's been shut down in was... Uh, With an Amumu. <laughs> With an Amumu. <laughs> <laughs> 32 kills to 45 chug hug continue to hold on they're not out of the game yet but they're definitely gonna have a hard time this is oddly similar to game number one in which there is no middle inhibitor and the nexus is sitting open for the taking but again it's all squishy members no tank for the side of go 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 if they burn a couple of crucial ultimates it could be an opportunity Ice for chug hug to come back I think Oriana, though, even with that shockwave, is going to go down. The disarm not going to last too long on the Yi, who's just going to step forward. Using those alpha strikes, doing what he can. He's able to save a life for the moment. He is going to be finally finished off in the end. But it doesn't matter because all of the members of Chug Hug are slowly falling. Cat and are going to be jumped on by the Killer Instinct from the Kai'Sa. She's going to go down to the Talia. Beautiful play as Catinator doing really good job on the repositioning. Makes use of those... Um, do, 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 do. I'll, I'll get it. They have unraveled just they have just enough health that they're able to push them back. However, it looks like Commander and Honchkrow are gonna be teaming up here trying to push in and end the game here. Super minions. 
Honchkrow oh. ult. Yep, he's gonna ult pushing in on the cat and Nader. However, he's gonna get jumped on immediately. <gasps> what? That is a massive amount of damage between the fiddle sticks and the bell cause. The fiddle may be going down, finds the fear onto Ice, who's blazered by the bell cause. He's shoved him to seismic shove, so he will be himself. dropped. And I really it dashes through all the minions, helping to leave pick up a double kill. And the base hold continues. The turtling from Child Hog is working, and slowly but surely, they're clawing their way back into the game. They're headed to the top side. I feel like we talked about this from the other team not that long ago. <laughs> and critically, what what's happening right now is they are critically keeping themselves alive here by holding the outer lanes. Right? Mid lane inhibitor doesn't have mid lane doesn't have an inhibitor yes that is a problem however if you can hold the outer lanes and focus your defense at that one point you can still have a chance to rotate and contest those neutral objectives in the baron in the drakes because they're able to keep those two waves on the side in check they're actually able to hold on keep their gold building up and start to get to this get this game to a point where gold lead doesn't make too much of a difference so the fact that they're down almost five thousand gold really doesn't hurt them as much as it would you know, five minutes ago in this game. But if this Yi gets onto the Nexus with a triple Mountain Drake and potentially the Baron buff as well, that Nexus is not going to last very long. Ice may not last very long as Seal is going to alt and try to get some burst damage down. However, the Shockwave holds him in place for the moment. He dashes away, trying to use that Shadow Clone to keep himself alive, but Jax able to box him and finish him off. The Baron is going to go down in Go-Go-Go's favor, so they've traded one for the Baron. Yi back in the base is going to be coming out with a almost full build, five completed items so far. Let's see, though, if Go-Go-Go's three members can 3v5 at the moment as Orianna's coming out from the base, still alive. Honchkrow's spell shield going to be knocked off. Cat and Nader wanting to engage, finds the seismic shove. Fiddlesticks is gone. This could be that was for Chuck Hug to finish it off because the Jace is, comes to the back line, finds Commander C, needs one more auto attack, takes him out. The TP out, not the TP out, the recall out by Kaisa means that Go-Go-Go is on the back foot. Chug Hug recognizing they don't have anything to take on this side of the map, decide to recall and instead make sure they're protecting that bottom side as that mini wave is slowly pushing forward. And their inhibitor has respawned in mid lane, so they can actually safely push out these waves, especially with the fact that there is no teleport on the side of Go Go Go. They can't just backdoor them right now. They have to go through the go through the lanes. All right, we'll see what happens as Dive is forced to flash away from the seismic shove by Catinator stepping forward. Dive or Seal once again doing his best imitation of just a pain train will go down. Dive using the killer instinct with a massive shield, but it's still don't think it's going to be enough against Jace's on the ribbon. He's just about to live, but it doesn't matter because God, the person comes through from the ribbon to take him out. And Chug Hug has three, four members here. They're all going to be hit by the fiddlesticks who flashes forward to make sure they're all sitting in his pain train himself. He's going to be able to pick up two. So Jace is now on the run. Should be able to finish off as well. Swipper comes through huge. Jammy Jar finds the stun onto the E, slowing them down. There is one member here to defend 40 seconds Still on most of the members the of Chug And the Alpha Strike, that's the ace. That's the ace, and that should be the game because all you need is this Yi a couple of seconds on the Nexus. Let's see how fast this inhibitor drops. But ladies and gentlemen, this game has been a back and forth one, and good lord, Ice, you cannot tell me that this game wasn't crazy, and you had a huge opportunity with a massive lead early in the game to win but in the end it was still pretty close very back and forth and go 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 comes out with the victory yep that's gonna be the game there just as catnid response can't do anything to stop swiffer from tearing apart that nexus fantastic game completely thought that was going to turn out differently after about 10 minutes and i'm so glad we got a good game out of that fantastic job by both teams of course you know there were some throws there was some give and take in the game and all, we got to see a lot of uh, a lot of fun things this game especially in the early game i really liked watching that bot lane seeing what happens when a lane gets completely smashed and i'm not trying to flame here but see what happens with the turret plating when a team does get completely smashed in one lane see how well that actually holds up and it turns out that did extend the laning phase a little bit gave haunch crow and uh dive an opportunity to get still get some farm and keep themselves somewhat relevant um especially once haunch crow was able to start roaming and making a difference in the other lanes that really ended up what started turning the game around and putting something back into the hands of team go 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 here 
Absolutely. All right, for the side of the losing team, why don't you go ahead and give the MVPs and honorable mentions? Okay, I am going to give MVP over... Actually, I'll start with honorable mention. I'm going to give the honorable mention over to Catinator, doing a fantastic job on the support to Leah, as we noted multiple times, uh, making sure to keep the lanes pushing. Look at the itemization from this to Leah, too. All offensive, even ended up selling the support item once the game got into its later stages, because you didn't need it at that point. Cat made sure to get the wards when he could, had the sweeper ready to go so he could sweep through the, the, sweep through the battlefield, make sure that he was denying vision as much as possible. MVP, I am going to give MVP over to Excellency Ice on this Oriana. Made sure to keep himself alive a lot of the time. Fantastic job using that Zonia's Hourglass whenever Seal managed to jump on him. That was actually the turning point in a couple of late game fights was Seal would jump onto Ice when Ice was isolated and would buy that extra couple of seconds with the Zonia's Hourglass, land the Shockwave, and then get the rest of the team involved so that there was a big fight and they actually managed to turn it around because it was a 4v5 because Seal got immediately deleted as soon as ice came out of uh, stasis and I don't disagree with that when the seal was going in aggressively especially you would think that as long as he's able to kill one make it a 5v4 or even a 4v4 there was a, still a huge opportunity for go 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 to be able to win the game but multiple times I think three times towards the end of the game he would go in 1v5 onto the Oriana as soon as Oriana was Zanya's she would come out of Zanya's she would shockwave herself that would hold seal in place for the team to come in finish him off he would die 5v4 chug hug has the pressure and able to then do something on the map with it for the winning team honorable mention I'm going to give over to Honch Crow for coming back massively in a game in which really I think most of us, if we were playing a normal game, would have started to see that flame much earlier on. Fed bottom lane, you know, no reason to keep going. Look at the support. What is he doing? He can't do anything right. Oh my gosh. But instead would have made everyone shut the heck up because man, his mid to late game plays were just so critical. Using that ultimate on multiple members, no fear whatsoever and building that banshee's veil was really really smart because it avoided the initial setup that was giving chuck hug so many opportunities to actually start those fights and then could follow up afterwards and for the mvp i think that i've got to give it over to um i'm gonna give it to dive just because of how many times his critical micro movements when it came to individual team fights not only got him out of danger but would actually get the kill in a game with no tanks it really is more about kill or be killed and dive more often than not was able to trade one for two in even bad situations and 16 12 and 15 i mean kill participation over 30 um over 30 kill participation Dive did an excellent job on Kaisa, which should be expected. I mean, it, he really does know how to play that champion super well. Okay. All right, Jake, here's a stat for you on that game. Ready for this? Uh oh. 22,735. The lowest damage to champions from any member of Go Go Go. Everybody on that team was pulling their weight. That was the Master Yi had the lowest damage on his team at 22,000. Meanwhile, there was one member of Team Chug Hug that was over the 20,000 mark, and that was Talia. Uh, do you think Catinator is really good? I think Catinator needs to... Uh, be nerfed? Needs, yeah, Cat needs to be nerfed. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Cat, didn't you have a paper to edit? Hang on a minute. Oh. You were supposed to be editing a paper tonight, because I remember we were talking about this in, uh, in chat earlier. Brittany, up, buddy? you missed Catinator getting the, the ban hammer. I mean, the nerf hammer. I mean, the yeah. love you, Cat. Please don't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't go anywhere, Cat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We're going to take a quick break. I'm going to send out these mystery skins to all these people. And I think we're going to do one more game and then do the Sona emote giveaway. So stick around. We still got at least one, maybe two more games. These games are going a little bit longer than normal. It is the preseason, so things